Hi YouTube and welcome back to the channel. I've got a video here with three stocks that look good for July 2021. If you enjoy this video and find value in it, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as any support would help out in a massive way. So let's get straight into it. The first company I've got here is Merkinco. Merck are one of the largest pharmaceutical companies based out of the US. They've got a diverse portfolio, but one of their flagship products is Keytruda, which it says here is for patients with late stage and advanced cancer. The financials in this company are also exceptional. Looking at the annual growth from 2016, which is just about 40 billion, up to about up to December 2020, which is just under 48, uh, analysts reckon this is looking good to progress at mid to, to single digits over the coming years ahead. Earnings per share here, they paint a similar story on the right path here from 2016 to 2020, all years of sustained growth and analysts reckon this will continue as well. From a valuation perspective, this company trades at a fair valuation of about a, a PE of about just under 14. And as can be seen here with the projected sales in 2022 and 2023, this looks fair value, a forward PE for about 11 or 12. One of the benefits if you pick up this company is that you're going to be getting paid a dividend right now of about 3.3%. This is only paid out with under 50%, so it's 40, just under 45% of the payout ratio, and it's also been grown at a sustained rate for the last 11 years, as can be seen here from the charts. From 2010, when they started paying the dividends, up to 2020, it's all been years of sustained growth. Here we have the three-year stock chart for Merck, with a closing price on Friday at $78.60. The one thing that jumps out for me here is the pattern that's developing. It looks like a wedge pattern is starting to unfold before us, with it reaching the, the top here, bouncing off of this resistance level, coming down, hitting off the support, and it's done this on various occasions, and it looks now where it's starting to, to even out, and it'll be interesting to see if this breaks out to the upside or if it starts to sell off. Using the PE analysis and the valuation, it's buying at this price certainly wouldn't do any harm as it looks a good long-term investment. Second company we've got here is none other than Walgreens Boots Alliance, one of the largest pharmaceutical companies across the world with a worldwide presence in all the countries named here below. They've been out of favour in Wall Street for quite some time now, and in my opinion, this has been creating some buying opportunities as of late. I do have this in the portfolio, and I think I would continue to average into this if it stays at current prices and further reduces. So let's look at the financials. Over the years from 2016 up till 2020, it's been on the upward trend, but they're expecting here 2021 and 2022 to be down years. This will probably be related to the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Earnings per share perspective, very similar story from 2016. It was on the right trend, 2018-2019, quite even years and quite a large drop off in August 2020. This has created the company to be valued very, very reasonably. We've got a PE here of 10, which further reduces down based on the, the, the sales growth for this company. One of the benefits that you'll get owning this company is you'll get a well-protected high dividend of 3.88%, with a PI ratio of under 40%. So if you're looking for passive income, I think this could merit a position within any portfolio. It shows here the years of growth have been six years, but this is slightly wrong as it doesn't include any dates that have been the same. But what we've got here, as you can see, from 2010, it's been growing at a steady rate of clips here right the way up to 2020. So for me, it looks good. You can see the clear drop in price from over $80 per share in 2018 down to the COVID pandemic lows of about $35 to $37. Right now, this is priced in at $48.17 from the latest close. This has generated the RSI, the Relative Strength Index, a closing below 30. So if you haven't got this in the portfolio, now could be an opportune time. And the last company that we've got here, rounded out the three, and this is the only company that I don't have in the portfolio, this is Qualcomm. They work in the semiconductors industry, which at the recent headlines, there's been a huge shortage. So this should really drive supply and demand for the company, resulting in good financial growth over the coming years. Looking at the revenue from 2016 up to 2020, it's been very similar. It's been in the 23 billion, 24 billion range, but 
Analysts are, are expecting this is going to increase up to 32 billion and 35 billion over the coming years. This is a similar story with the earnings per share, as can be seen here, quite stagnant with a quite a big jump up in 2021-2022. And in saying this, right now it trades at a fair valuation. It's certainly not too expensive. PE coming in at 18, and as per 2022 and 2023 earnings, it's coming at about 16 and 15. So very, very fair valued, not too expensive, got a quite a lot of, of upward revisions here for the earnings, positive signs. And one of the benefits that you'll get, as with the other two companies, is you'll be paid while you wait. Right now there's a 1.91% dividend yield, low payout of 34%. And they've also been paying for 18 years, so they've really got a long track record here, which shows that the company is committed to the dividend. And here's the chart here. So this is if you're a dividend income investor, this would get you excited. But also the capital appreciation that you could get on this company over the coming years could really make this a, a good long-term hold. They've also been busy with mergers and acquisitions. So let's take a look at one of the most recent ones. This extract here was taken from the company's website and it pretty much just sums up the recent acquisition for a company called Nuvia for $1.4 billion and this will further enhance their CPU exposure. So I'd advise you to go and check this out if this is something you're interested in. But lastly, let's take a look at the share chart. And here we have the share price chart for Qualcomm. This looks like a company that has performed exceptionally well over recent years, but that's not to say that this can't continue into the future. What jumps out for me is the recent consolidation, which is coming into play. The bottom level here acting as, a at this point, a bit of resistance where it broke out to the upside and it's came, the prices came back down and it's bounced off this twice and this top level is also bounced off this twice so who knows this could break out to the upside and be positive or it could come back down to test these support levels at the bottom here but this sums up the video these are three companies that could look good in any diversified portfolio so if you've enjoyed this please leave a thumbs up and i look forward to seeing you in the next video thanks